Ink on the Rhine Written by Stefan Richter Narrated by Charlotte Baker For Marie Even if I can't be in your life, I'm glad I had the greatest of pleasure to know you. Chapter 2 Mia stepped into the apartment, closed the door behind her, and leaned against it. That was such a long day, which makes it a normal first day, I guess. She knew she was supposed to be tired at this hour, but she felt thrilled as thoughts of the day's events brightened her up and put a smile on her face. She recalled some of the students she remembered best and laughed, thinking about how much the future was going to bring her. New students every year, new faces, new stories, new points of view. She'd spend more time listening to them than they'd spend listening to her, and each new person would expand, change, or broaden her views on the world and make her wiser. How did I get so lucky? Every day she was going to meet these people and drink from them like drinking from the well of knowledge. This well would never run out of water because it would be refilled every year. She was the happiest person on earth, or she could have been, if life were that simple. Mia licked her upper lip and savoured the salty taste of tears that rolled down her cheeks and landed on her smile. Be happy, silly. She locked the door, went to the kitchen and took out a bottle of wine, but then reconsidered and made herself some mint tea instead. Warming her hands on the cup and smelling the mint, she moved to the living room and lit beeswax candles. The quivering flames lit up the place and filled it with coziness and comfort. Mia walked to a modern-looking wooden chest of drawers with a sound system standing on top and turned on relaxing music. She hesitated. Melancholy spread over her face as she stared at the top drawer. It seemed to hypnotise her, calling her like a siren to crash her ship on the reef. Unable to resist the lure, she opened the drawer and looked inside. It was completely empty except for a plain, platinum ring glistening in the candlelight. The ring was resting on a white silk handkerchief, with embroidered text, You're my friend, my love, my life. Mia and France. Mia glanced at her hand still holding the drawer handle. Her tanned skin had a nice even tone, except for a single bright stripe on the wrist where she was wearing a bracelet. The stripe from the ring was long gone. She closed the drawer, sat on a wide window sill, and looked outside. There wasn't too much to see from the ground floor, but it didn't matter anyway. Her body was there, but her mind was somewhere else. The routine with the tea, candles, and music wasn't making her feel better but at least it was relaxing enough to help her not to feel worse. She took another sip from the cup and almost spilled the tea when a small rock suddenly hit the window. Mia! She heard a voice calling from outside but couldn't see anything in the darkness. Senya? No one answered. Mia opened the window wide and leaned out, looking straight ahead. She turned to the left and then right, but the yard was empty. The moment she finally looked dead ahead again, Senya stood up and appeared before her holding a bottle of wine with two glasses. The quick movement messed up Senya's dark blonde hair so badly that it completely covered her face. Given her height and fragile petite body, she looked like Mia's younger sister, even though she was older. "'What are you doing here?' asked Mia, fixing Senya's hair. "'You're not going to call it a day, are you? We're going out!' A wide smile spread across Senya's face. She was either very proud of herself because of this out-of-character visit, or was very excited that the two of them were going to live in the same city again. Not only that, but they were also going to work together. Mia assumed the smile was caused by a mix of both reasons, and, extremely touched, gave Senya a firm, long hug. Okay, where are we going? Going? Senya tried and failed to fake being surprised and pressed a button on her remote. A small car parked in the distance bleeped and lit up the yard with bright headlights. We're driving, Em. Always prepared for spontaneous adventures, Mia immediately put her cup down, blew out the candles, turned off the music, and jumped out from the window. Well, giddy up then! They got in the car and drove down the street and into the night. Senya couldn't help herself and was constantly peeking at Mia with the same wide smile on her face while Mia tried to figure out where they were going. Perplexed, she was looking out the car window at all the small, neat houses they passed by. After a while, the houses were replaced with trees, 
and through the branches she saw a glimpse of the river reflecting the moon. She was always bad with maps and locations, and the fact they were driving outside the city in complete darkness didn't help at all, so after a while she gave up and looked at Senya. That made Senya smile even wider and cry out for joy. How long is the drive? Patience is bitter but its fruit is sweet. Senya quoted Jean Chardin and turned the car into the woods. Mia could hear gravel and old dry branches cracking under the tyres. Senya did a couple of sharp turns, stopped the car, killed the engine and took a flashlight from the back seat. Take the wine and the glasses, she commanded of Mia and got out. Mia stepped out of the car and felt the soft ground under her feet. She looked around trying to find the road they were taking but saw only a barely visible wild and narrow path. She closed the door and the car went to sleep, shutting off the lights and leaving the two friends in the darkness. Um, Senya? Senya turned on the flashlight and shouted, This way! She went deeper into the forest. Follow the light! They walked for a couple of minutes and went through several wild bushy patches that were ready to snag Mia's pullover at any moment. All Mia could do was follow, having no focal point in the deep dark of the night other than the silhouette of her friend, outlined by the juddering flashlight. Dry leaves rustled and twigs cracked under her boots as she walked on. Far off in the distance, a nightbird screeched its eerie longing cry and others joined in. Finally, Mia heard the river in front of them. Senya pushed away the branches blocking the path, and the friends stepped out from the woods. Mia saw the Rhine, the city lights above it in the distance, and a small islet surrounded by the river from all sides. The islet housed only a couple of trees, and it was connected to the place where they were standing by a narrow path of rocks. With the twin image of the crescent moon cast on the water, ripples disturbing its face, Memories of time spent here with Senya rippled through Mia's mind and spirit, and with them came the joyful sadness of nostalgia. Mia smiled and cried, You're the best, while hugging Senya, and then took her boots off and rushed to the islet. Senya grinned and followed her to the path of rocks. They crossed the river and sat near an old campfire under one of the trees. The silver from the moon water was gently cradling them, and the trees hid the girls from the rest of the world. Mia gazed into the distance, enjoying the city lights. When was the last time we were here? she asked, pouring wine in both glasses and handing one of them to Senya. Years ago, Senya took a sip. Before your big journey, she took another sip, started the campfire, and cuddled into Mia's chest, setting her eyes on the city lights. Before... She couldn't finish the sentence as she glanced at the glass blankly. Yes, I remember. Mia noticed that the memories might drag Senya in a direction she didn't want her to go, so she decided to quickly change the subject. I used to throw rocks at your window like that, you know. And I had to deal with my parents when they caught me sneaking out. And what for? So you could make out with Carl. Senya slapped her on the hip in a friendly way and answered, Weren't we covering for you so you could hang out with Christopher? How many times did you guys break up and get back together? Three hundred? I think 13 is a bit closer to the truth, but it sure felt like 300. Mia took a sip of wine. Senya momentarily turned her face from the city lights and looked into Mia's eyes for the briefest moment, but with such intensity that Mia's pulse leapt. Their fingers intertwined. Senya rested her head wearily and closed her eyelids. I'm glad you're back. Mia looked at the flames of the crackling campfire, smelled the forest, and felt the warmth only to realise that the smell was coming not from the trees around, but from Senya's hair. She was still using her favourite herbal shampoo after all these years, and the warmth was not from the campfire, but from her body. Their breath involuntarily synced, and Mia noticed that the head on her chest was getting heavier and heavier as Senya was slowly relaxing and drifting off. Her smile was gone, and Mia couldn't help but notice that it was hiding how tired Senya was at this late hour after a whole day of teaching. Mia took the glass from Senya's hand, put it on the ground, hugged Senya with one hand, moved her hair with the other, and gently kissed her forehead. I missed you too.